Chris is a local Sofia foodie, and he offers these cool tours for travelers to get a taste of Sofia's unique gastronomy. So it's called Balkan Bites. You've got the little sign here, and you're meeting people here. And it's free, right? It's absolutely free. free. Charge. Okay. And the idea is to try typical Bulgarian dishes. Okay. And make a connection between the other Balkan countries uh, and their culture as well. So we're gonna have some good food today. Yeah, exactly. Sweet, man. Thank you, brother. Chris's Balkan Bites tour is perfect for foodies, travelers on a budget, or anyone who likes to eat. I think that about covers everyone, yes? So this is typical traditional Bulgarian restaurant. Okay. And it, its name is Haji Draganovite Izbi. Mm. Haji. Haji. Draganovite. Draganovite. Izbi. Izbi. That's not so hard. Yeah. Haji Draganovite Izbi. Wow. All right, this is a traditional Bulgarian appetizer, yes? White cheese is the big cheese in Bulgaria. Fine by me. Delicious, man. Thank you, brother. <laughs> say cheese. Cheese. Now, what, how do you say cheese again? In uh, Cizele. Cizele. Okay, man. Rock and roll, baby. What's this? That's Pelin. Pelin. All right. Yeah. And Thank you. Yeah. Now, what do they say when they salute? Nastrave. Nastrave. Ah. Next was some traditional Bulgarian soup from aptly named Superstar. This soup is called Tarator. 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 Exactly. And it's a typical Bulgarian cold summer soup. Mm. It's made out of yogurt, uh, cucumbers, dill, garlic, and some walnuts inside. In uh, Bulgaria, you can get this in almost any restaurant okay. uh, in the summer. And when you order it in some restaurants, they ask you, do you want it uh, in a cup as a soup or do you want it in a glass so that you can just drink it? Oh. And to me, actually, the easiest way to do that is just drink it. I like agree 100%, man. Mmm, it's good. I can't say before this trip I'd ever tasted Bulgarian cuisine, but after Chris's tour, I feel like a certified expert. <laughs> Bulgaria's culture is hard for me to describe. It's a mixture of old European, Turkish, Russian, Greek, and even Middle Eastern influences that come together for its own unique blend. Perhaps nothing illustrates this as much as its folkloric music and dance. My guide, Katerina, grew up dancing at her father's studio, and she wanted me to get a glimpse of this Bulgarian tradition firsthand. So we headed to the Flamingo. No, not the Vegas Casino. The Flamingo is a dance and dinner theater in Sozopol, and while it's straight up touristy, I enjoyed it immensely. The highlight of the evening was the fire dancer. Walking on coals was practiced by ancient cultures all over the world, including, it turns out, Bulgaria. The dance dates back centuries before Christianity. The dancer's grand finale is culminated with taking a child across the fire for blessing and good luck. Now that's hot. That was some primitive stuff right there, man. That was cool. Katarina tried to get back in my good graces. She knew I had more than a passing interest in underground music, so she took me to meet one of her pals who just happened to play in a band. You guys weren't the first punk band in Bulgaria, were in you? In this town, yeah. Really? Yeah. No kidding. Okay, yeah, she so holding it down for Russe. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, sweet, man. Because I heard oh, one song that was like, la, la, la. Have a little daughter. Yeah. That was her first song when I told her, could you please sing me something? Oh, and she started singing this, wah, 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 wah. It's All called right. Donica. The song is called Donica, and okay. she is called Donica oh, as well. Oh, man, so. that's awesome. Congratulations, man. Cheers. Really catch the kids, I mean, because yeah. her friends as well, they, they like yeah. it. <laughs> it's like punk rock for kids. Yeah. Is it hard being a punk band in Bulgaria? Can you say what you want without harassment? Yeah. No problems. No problems. No police coming to, like, knock on your door, nothing like that. That's, that's in the past, yeah? Well, he is a policeman anyway. Oh, <laughs> we have a policeman in the band. These guys are keeping it real and kicking it old school. They don't have a website or any social media, and they plan to keep it that way. So if you want to see them, you're going to have to come to Bulgaria. The good news is they will probably take you out for an Iron afterwards. Hey, man, and I'm glad you're my friend, man, because you're so angry when you're singing, man. I'm like, I want this guy to be my friend. Yeah, no, no, it's cool. You're letting it out, man. Rousse, Bulgaria. 
There are tons of hidden gems in this quaint river town, including the Church in the Rock, an old monastery from way back in the day. Be sure to wear good hiking shoes and a thick coating of mosquito repellent. The whole monastery, it used to be a monastery in the past. Yeah. It was a very huge one from the 11th century. These monks, uh, they were followers of this uh, religious stream. It's not a sect, it's okay. a religious stream which is called uh, Isikasm. It's a Greek word which okay. means uh, being silent, stay silent. Oh, so they were all, so, there was a vow of silence. Right, they were people who wanted to live uh, away from the society, not right. close to other people. These frescoes are not restored. They have not been restored. They have not been. This is the original. Whoa. Well, yes, because when they found this church yeah. in the oh. early 20th century, all this was covered with a very thick wax layer from the candles, because in the past people used candles here in this church. Okay. And the smoke from the candles, made of natural wax, yeah. they formed this layer. On the, on the frescoes, and yeah. actually this was what protected the frescoes for all Amazing. these years. Wow, unintentional, but yes. it protected them. Did they have visitors? Could people come up and visit no. them? No, no. It they was were uh, an absolutely closed uh, society. Did they ever go down to town? Uh, no, to the no. Village? They had their fields, they, they grew their fruits, vegetables, they had animals, so this is how Completely they Completely self-sustainable. But I wonder if they were able to express themselves other ways, because I'm like, you know, after a while, you got to express yourself, I believe, personally. Well, maybe don't. this is how they express themselves. This is one way, yeah. This was my first visit to an old monastery, and what a first it was. I can't imagine living here, or dedicating my entire life to silent meditation. And judging by this trip, evidently, neither could my cameraman. Back in town, Katerina shared some more recent history of Bulgaria. Katerina, this is a statue of freedom, yes? Freedom, yes. Um, that came from the Russians when they liberated you guys from? That's right, from the <laughs> Ottomans. Then when it occurred, then it really was trading one form of repression for another, I guess, right? That's for right, that's right, because uh, right after this uh, liberation for Bulgaria, there was a very difficult political period. Communism's crippling economic effects are still being felt in Bulgaria today. It's more isolated than other areas of Eastern Europe, so change has been slow in coming. But it is coming, and Rusay's tourism efforts are a prime example. For my money, I'm coming to Rus. That's what I'm doing. I'm glad Rusay. To hear that. Welcome. And then I'm going to learn how to pronounce it. It's Rusay. Rusay, not Rus. R U S E. Even though you pronounce it Rus, yeah. we say Ruse yeah. in Bulgaria. So you can say Rus, you can do that, but you're just going to be a, you, you a tourist. Too. Yeah, they're going to know. Yeah, a ruse, a rose, yes. a ruse by any other name. Bulgaria. I had little time to research and thus no clue what to expect when I arrived. The brain was working overtime to take it all in, but the heart felt it right away. And my gut tells me I'll be back. Until then, I'll be daydreaming about the memories from this trip for years to come. Nastrave. Hey, what's up guys? This is Rob from Raw Travel. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, or even if you didn't, please hit subscribe because we're adding new content all the time. And maybe you have some ideas about some destinations you'd like to see or some travel tips of your own. If so, just hit me up in the comments section.